Hello, um, in this mind map, we are going to look at acute inflammation. So before we start, let's try to define acute inflammation. So this is a protective response of the body of vascularized tissue that aims to neutralize and eliminate agents that cause injury, as well as our own dead tissue. So it's essentially a response of living tissue to any injurious agents. Now what are some of these injurious agents or causes of acute inflammation? Well, we'll start off with biological agents, such as uh, microbial organisms, and this includes things like bacteria, um, fungal organisms, parasites, etc. In the next category, we have necrotic tissue, which is essentially endogenous material, and this can incite a heavy inflammatory response. For example, um, in acute myocardial infarction, the necrotic uh, cardiomyocytes are often very heavily infiltrated with neutrophils. Moving on to the next category, we have physical agents or physical causes, and these include heat injury, cold injury, radiation, as well as even direct physical trauma. Now, chemicals can of course also give rise to acute inflammation, uh, things like poisons and toxins, and also foreign bodies. For example, if there is an injury from a splinter or a thorn that penetrates the skin into the underlying tissue, there will be a localized inflammatory reaction. And just for completeness sake, I'm going to include another cause. This is more seen in chronic rather than acute inflammation, and this is immune reactions. So there are actually four types of hypersensitivity reactions, which you will learn about later. And... Um, a common disease that you would see these uh, reactions would be autoimmune disease, which is uh, chiefly manifested as uh, chronic inflammatory infiltrates within the tissues. So now that we've looked at uh, the main causes as well as the main reasons for acute inflammation, let's now focus on the main events that occur during acute inflammation. And it's important to understand that there are two key players um, for acute inflammation, and everything starts here. So first of all, the blood vessels are very important and many of the key events occur in the vessels, usually small vessels and capillaries. And the second key player would be the cells. And here you can see that this is a neutrophil because there's a multi-lobed nucleus. This of course is also known as a polymorphonuclear leukocyte. And this is one of the key players in acute inflammation. And very often, another cell that plays a major role would be the macrophage. And the macrophages are very important in amplifying the inflammatory response. So blood vessels and cells. Now let's uh, start by looking first at the events that occur um, in the blood vessels. So first of all, one of the earliest events is vasodilation. This uh, essentially refers to a widening of the internal diameter of the vessel, and this has the effect of bringing more, more blood into the region of injury, and therefore this gives rise to some of the clinical signs of inflammation, and it's also good to bring more blood because that's where all the cells come from. And following this, there would be an active process of increased permeability, which allows both fluid um, as well as cells to leak out through the walls of the blood vessels to the area of uh, inflammation. And following this, there is also endothelial cell activation. This is important uh, partially in the recruitment process of leukocytes. And uh, there's also stasis of the blood within the vessels um, that are supplying the area that is inflamed. So I'm just going to just pull out and digress a little bit here to use the vascular events to explain some of the clinical features that we are familiar with in acute inflammation. So as you know, if any of you have experienced uh, things such as pimples before, in acute inflammation there are some cardinal signs and uh, what we can experience is usually things like uh, redness as you can see in this area of the skin. This is a picture of a boil. There is usually uh, some degree of warmth as well and swelling. And uh, also, I mean, this looks painful, although obviously you can't actually feel that it's painful, but there's pain as well and sometimes loss of function. 
So vasodilation can give rise to warmth because of increased blood flow to that area as well as redness or erythema. Increased permeability in turn leaks, leads to things leaking out of vessels such as fluid and this gives rise to the swelling that we encounter. Um, the swelling is often due to edema or leakage of uh, fluid and plasma out of the vessels into the interstitium. Now there are also other signs of acute inflammation and these would include pain as well as loss of function. So pain is caused by some of the chemical mediators uh, that are important in acute inflammation such as prostaglandins which we will just touch on very briefly later and also loss of function is often due to a combination of these other factors as well as pain. Now let's move on and look at uh, the cellular events in acute inflammation. So the leukocytes have to first uh, get out of the blood in, uh, through the wall of the blood vessels and the very first step of this is margination. So this is when the white blood cells actually move towards the edge of the blood flow near to the wall of the blood vessel. Then they start to roll along the endothelial cells and start to adhere to them. This is a diagram from Robbins and you can see that there are leukocytes, neutrophils within the vessel lumen. And if you just read here, you can see the processes that are happening. This is the endothelium. And you can see that the cells are marginating, they're rolling, they start to adhere. And then finally, they actually move through the wall between the endothelial cells. And this process is called transmigration. And then they move to the tissue site of injury. So transmigration um, is the process of exiting the blood vessels of the leukocytes and this is also known as diapedesis. The next step is chemotaxis. This is how the white blood cells actually travel to the localized site of injury. And this is an active process. And once they reach their destination, they then um, achieve their life goal, which is essentially to become activated and to phagocytose all the offending agents. So this is again a very active process that involves uh, eating up the agent and releasing lysosomal enzymes to destroy the offending agent. So this is a picture again from Robbins of a neutrophil and you can see it has um, basically eaten up or phagocytosed a bacterium. So all these events, the combination of vascular events as well as cellular events, ultimately lead to two main outcomes. One is fluid exudation at the site of inflammation. And this is important because it brings a lot of very important chemical mediators to that area. And of course, the second one is cellular recruitment. So again, essentially what's happening is that we're bringing the fluid and we're bringing the leukocytes to the site. And this is because uh, a lot of the important uh, chemicals that give rise to all these things that happen during inflammation are derived from fluid and from cells. So just to briefly end off, uh, I'll say a few words about chemical mediators. So again, we need to know first of all, where do they come from? Fluid and cells. And the cells include leukocytes, um, endothelial cells, platelets as well. A very important chemical mediator is tumor necrosis factor alpha or TNF alpha. And this is responsible for many of the systemic effects of inflammation, such as fever and loss of appetite. Now, pain is caused by prostaglandins. These are derived from arachidonic acid, which can be found in the cell membranes of many of the cells that are involved in inflammation, including leukocytes, as well as blood vessel and endothelial cells. Understanding these chemical mediators and also the cellular events will help us to understand the mechanism of some of the anti-inflammatory drugs that are used commonly, such as corticosteroids. Now just to sum up everything, we've looked at acute inflammation, what is the ultimate goal, which is to neutralize, to eliminate injury, uh, injurious agents and to wall off the area of injury. We've looked at the causes of acute inflammation as well as the main events which involve the blood vessels and the key cellular players. And we've looked at also um, the ultimate goal of fluid exudation and cellular recruitment, which brings the chemical mediators and cells to the localized area to concentrate the inflammatory reaction.